in the world of basketball against a very tough and able and unbeaten opponent in Joe Joyce. So he's there now and he's, he's got a seat at the table. So him against uh, Joshua is a no-brainer, but I don't think they'll risk that fight, that fight against uh, Sam. I was going about for Joe because, you know, after that first um, boxing against him, he got stopped in the sixth round, but I thought he put a little bit of weight on, didn't he? Put a bit more heavier going into this fight. I thought he's got half a chance here. But where does he go from here, Frank? Because you know, he's 38 years old. I know Zhang is 40, but where does uh, Joe go from here? Is he going to, where, is he another fight in him or has he, has he got, is he got to retire now? I don't know. Look, that's got to be his choice, Ray. You know, no one wants to be told they've got to retire. Mm. He's got to decide what he feels he's got left, if he's got something left. It's the first time he's ever been flawed in, in his professional career. So it's not like, I mean, two fights ago, he fought, he, 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 he had a tremendous fight against Joe Parker. And he got caught a couple of times in that fight and won it and stopped Parker. He mm. was the first fight to stop Parker. And the same people who telling him to retire were saying he was like more or less the future at heavyweight. Unbelievable. He was yeah. So you know what it's like. One one performance and it's and it, and it changed. The problem for Joe is he could not cope with that southpaw stance. He just didn't deal with it. I thought he did in the first couple of rounds. He was he was moving to Zhang's left and he was negating what he was doing in certainly in the first round. But then when he started when he's in the third round, when he traded with him and he square on, he got he caught him with a tremendous punch. Mind you, if that punch had landed on anybody's chin, it'd have knocked him over. It was yeah. a tremendous punch. I mean, you're right to say that obviously a win and loss changes the picture completely for every fighter. Uh, and for, for Joe, perhaps he does now fall down the pecking order a little bit. What would you like to see him do next? I think he's got to have a serious think. You know, he's sitting down with his team. And as I said to him, I went to the aggressive after the fight. And I said, listen, Joe, there's no decisions to be made. And don't let anybody force you into anything. The one who's going to know is yourself. You're the one who's going to know what you've got left. But you've got to admit what you feel you've got left. Because for me, I always believe it's the fighter's the first one to know when he should retire, but the last to admit it. So what he needs to do is to be serious and think about it. But there's some good fights to carry on out there against guys who are orthodox fighters, not southpaw, that, that may get him back in the swing. But it's his choice at the end of the day. Frank, you said about you know um, Joshua and then Zhang. Do you think he will beat him, uh, Zhang? Do you think he's got too much for Joshua? Well, he's, he's, he's got a good chin. He took a couple of good. He's taken a couple of good shots in fights, and more importantly, he can bang. And I know if he catches Joshua one of them, it'll be lights out. There's no doubt about that. Mm. I want to just get your thoughts, if we, if we can, Frank, on Conor Ben returning to the ring. He claimed a unanimous points decision win in the uh, Rodolfo Orozco in Florida on uh, Saturday night. There has been a lot of reaction to whether he should still be even fighting with what's been ongoing with him. Where do you stand on it? He should be fighting. It's not yeah. clearly. I, I mean, you can't be no clearer than the British Boxing Board of Control said, despite what his promoters keep saying and everyone around him keeps saying, he has not been cleared to fight. He has not explained to a hearing, UCAD in this case, he's not explained to him why he had banned substances in his body. Now, there may be a good reason for it or not, but he has not appeared before them, so he's not been cleared to box by him. And... Yeah. It, they just take him off to a state that don't give a monkeys about that type of stuff. And obviously, he, he, he's, he's had that fight. And he's only got to look at the way it was done. And he announced it three days before the fight. No one looked at it. And that, to me, is all underhanded. It's not like they've announced it. It's everybody a chance to, to even, you know, try and stop it or lobby the Florida to say, look, he shouldn't be fighting until he clears himself and explains why he tested positive. That, that's the way it was done. It's wrong and he shouldn't be fighting until he clears his name. So if you were his promoter, this wouldn't have ever happened. You'd have been, you'd be more saying, look, let's let's sort out the process first before you even well, think about a fight. Simultaneously to him getting tested positive, fighter was with me, Salama Tetti, former world champion, he tested positive uh, in a UCAD test and we made him go through the process and he went through the post process. He couldn't explain that PEDs in the system. It was banned for four years. That's how it should be. Yeah, absolutely. Just a quick one, Frank. I know you're a big Arsenal fan. What did you make of the North London derby yesterday? Oh, I, you know, <laughs> that summed it up. I'll uh, tell you, the atmosphere is, um, I mean, the atmosphere has changed considerably at the Emirates. I mean, it's like a real, you know, it's, it's, it's a real intense atmosphere there. And obviously, it's the, you know, it's that big match to the local, the local derby. But um, I, I felt they started off okay. 
And then I, I just think the second half, Spurs got the better of the game. Mm. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I think Spurs were slightly the better team, I hate to say it, on the day. But we were missing Trussard, we were missing Martinelli, and it showed It showed that we missed them. Mm, definitely. I mean, they always say form goes out the window, don't they, when it comes oh, to does, derbies yeah. and but things. But no, no, the Spurs were a good side. No, but what I was going to say is, because in, you know, this, this Spurs side now feels like it's a side that can match Arsenal, mm. as in make it really entertaining North London derbies, which we want to see, don't we? Oh, no, we don't, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we want to see a fire meal being thrown. Yeah, I get you, I get you. Harry, when I grew up, it wasn't a fire meal because they were in middle school. Yeah. We were in middle school. Fair enough, fair enough. Right, Frank, as always, thank you for joining us.